Hello friends, uh, Kyler here. I uh, wanted to answer another one of the questions that was brought up uh, the other day when I asked for um, questions about health and uh, wellness. So um, this one is one that I'm really excited about. Um, it is what is holistic wellness from the perspective of abundance. And if you're not familiar with um, abundance versus lack perspective, um, it's just kind of a general worldview, uh, how you approach life, how you approach uh, yourself um, and others and relationships, kind of every aspect of your life. Um, and do you do that from the perspective that there is enough and you are enough or is it that you uh, believe that there isn't enough um, and that you are not enough so um, a, a lack perspective would be assuming that if you didn't uh, get this particular job um, then that was really 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 bad news uh, where an abundance perspective would be like you know what something even better is going to come along tomorrow um, I'm just getting ready. Like I was, I was protected, uh, from, uh, missing an opportunity later on. So it's, it, it apply to everything in life. Um, how you view yourself, how you view your relationships with others. Um, and if you realize as I'm talking that, that, uh, your perspective is mostly lack and not abundance don't beat up on yourself just like just notice it uh witness that uh that is the case and think oh wow there's actually a different way to look at life and um start practicing so uh don't don't be hard on yourself uh just uh uh just look at it as a new opportunity make this the first step toward um looking at things with abundance there is more than one way to look at things and uh, there's more time to practice a new way. So the question again is what is holistic wellness from the perspective of abundance? And I think that we can look at it on a macro scale and on a micro scale. So on a macro scale, um, look at the planet and the universe that we uh, live, live on, the planet that we live on, the universe we live in. Um, so amazing like look at how the countless stars that you can see from a mountain road um, and we get benefit from those stars being out there in the universe like how incredible is that um, and then the sun that is like our personal sun um, is doing its thing burning up uh, all those miles away and we get benefit as we spin around and uh, kind of get evenly cooked <laughs> every day and um, everything on earth benefits from the sun so that that's free it doesn't cost us anything to experience that huge huge blessing and then um, uh, the rain uh, that uh, waters us um, just free just comes out of the sky just falls just naturally recycling the the water the humidity on the earth and um, always in that cleansing cycle uh, purifying cycle amazing um, and then the earth like the the dirt itself full of nutrients gives life to plants and trees uh, those plants and trees pull up uh, the abundant nutrients and and then the trees themselves are purifying the air for us for free so on on the macro scale like there is so much abundance uh, to to wellness and that could even include um, like the essential oils that we're able to pull from plants uh, and maximize healing benefit from that liberally the the plants don't charge anything uh there's some labor involved some caretaking uh some processing uh, but it's available to us and um and then the nutrients that come from the plants and fruits and vegetables and even um 
uh, hopefully uh, free range animals. Um, and then if you look at our bodies, I, I know this is this is the part that's like most personal to me is is just the experience within my own body of overcoming so much fatigue and um, inability to get stronger. Like I knew from the time I was three years old that I was experiencing some kind of um, fatigue and tiredness and just feeling worn out all the time. And uh, that persisted all the way through into my early 20s. Um, I could not get stronger. Uh, if I worked out, I got weaker and smaller. I was already skin and bone. Um, and it just didn't seem to matter. Like if I, if I worked out, I got worse. And so that was super scary because I was supposedly in my prime, you know, kids are supposed to have endless amounts of energy. And, um, you know, in the teens and early twenties, like, um, you're supposed to be able to stay up all night and work all day and, you know, be strong and recover well. And all, none of that was the case for me. And, um, and so I thought, well, if, if, uh, if this is me in my prime, then what's, what is it going to be like as I get older? And, um, but there was a part of me that was always believing that there was something more that was possible, um, that my body wanted to be whole. And, um, actually one of my earliest experiences with, with my body was, uh, getting a cut on my knee and, um, and then a couple days later seeing it scab over. And then my mom told me that was God's little skin factory, uh, under the scab. And, um, and then there was like brand new skin, uh, on my knee where the cut had been just days before. And that, I remember that was just a, a pivotal moment for me, uh, realizing that the body wants to recover. And so like with the body, it's the same with the planet, like how many fires and floods and earthquakes and, um, uh, eruptions have happened on the planet over thousands of years and new life relentlessly comes forth. Um, our own bodies are replacing cells every two weeks to every five to seven years. The skin, all the skin cells in your body get replaced every two weeks. And uh, most tissue is around a couple months to four months. And then um, the bones are five to seven years. Every cell in your bones is brand new. And so you may think that you're 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 years old, but your cells are no more than seven years old at the most. Most of them are a couple months old um, and replacing. So, you know, the abundance of the abundance of the idea that like we're constantly being remade all the time is a wonderful thing. And you're able to resupply your body's stock of new cell making material <laughs> with what you eat. So eating highly nutritious food, nutrient dense foods is not a chore, but a beautiful, abundant luxury, um, that we have. And, uh, drinking water is something that for most of the planet is readily available. Like, and, uh, you might pay a water bill, but, um, but water literally falls from the sky all the time. And so that is an abundant resource. And then, um, oxygen, every cell in your body benefits from oxygen and that is readily available. Not, not very many times in our lives are we like in need of more oxygen. And so one of the big benefits of exercise and movement is increased oxygen delivery to the body. And yet you can do that at any point. Most people can do that at any point. Uh, just breathe a little deeper, breathe a little more consciously, pull in 
using your diaphragm, like pull into the belly, deep, deep breaths, get oxygen in, because as your as you breathe in and it infuses the blood through the walls of the lungs with oxygen and then the blood takes that all throughout the body if you're sitting still most of the time then not every cell in the body is getting as much oxygen as would be healthy for it so when you get up and move you walk or you jog um, you play a sport uh, you play catch with your kids uh, and you're breathing a little bit deeper, more cells in your body are getting oxygen. And all of that is free. Um, for your bone and muscle, your lean tissue, all that it needs is a regular challenge to remind it that it needs to stay strong. So if you're doing lunges or squats, you're working on all the muscles in the leg that are all involved in those movements. And then if you're doing a push movement, like a push up against the kitchen counter or the floor, you're doing half of the upper body muscle work. If you do a pull movement, like a resistance band row or a bent over row with a dumbbell, then you are, or a kettlebell swing, then you are strengthening the, all the pull muscles in the upper body between those three exercises the squats or lunges, push and pull. If you're doing it all mostly body weight, then you, every major muscle group in the body is involved and all of the bones as well will get the signal that they need to become denser, become stronger. And all of that is free. <laughs> so you can, you can grab anything around the house and do a kettlebell type swing with it. Um, and if you reach fatigue doing those three movements once or twice a week, then you're going to be maintaining and increasing bone and muscle density in your body, which is the foundation for all fitness activity. So like all of that is so abundantly available to everyone, oxygen, water, nutrient dense foods, movement, exercise, circulation, the, the planet that is always recovering from disasters, offering new life, offering uh, nutrients that we need to survive. It's just such a beautiful, amazing thing to think about and meditate on. So I hope that is encouraging that is I, what I believe holistic wellness from the perspective of abundance. There's so much available to us all the time and we get to revel in that abundance. If you have any comments, uh, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.